YouTube. So today's problem is problem number 79 from chapter 4 on the section on maximum power transfer. So we have this circuit here with a 3 milliamp independent um, current source connected in parallel with a 4 kilo ohm resistor. This is 8 kilo ohms. This is 20, 20k, 10 volts, 2.5k, 10k, and um, 10 volts with a voltage drop going from here to here. That's the direction of the drop. And all that is connected to a varistor, which is our load. And then part A says find the value of this varistor that will give us maximum power transfer. In part B, we're supposed to find the maximum power that can be delivered, delivered to R0. And in part C, it says find the resistor that's closest to what we found um, in part A and determine how much power is delivered to the resistor. Okay, so a problem of maximum power transfer basically translates into finding um, R7 and then V7 and because when the value of the load exactly matches the, matches the feminine equivalent resistance, that's the maximum power that can be delivered to the load. So knowing that, that means we're going to try and find the feminine resistance to this and um, and then finding the feminine resistance first to, because we can, it means that we're going to connect to maximize the R0, get the maximum power that can be delivered. We're going to connect the R7 in series with its V7. That's the maximum that it can do. So first thing we're going to find in part A is what is this R7? Lucky for us, lucky for us, R7 in this circuit has only independent sources, so that means we can re disable the power sources and um, and see what the load, what resistance is seen by the load. So open the load, see what resistance is seen, and that will give us our R7 in. So that means we open up current sources and we disable um, independent voltage sources. Now don't forget that this method only works if your circuit has only depend independent sources, which this circuit does. So we can open up the 3 milliamp independent current source. That leaves us with 4K in series with 8K. And that's going to be the 20K there. And we're going to short out our independent voltage sources. This gives me 2.5K here. And then this is... 10k here, and then we're going to short that 10 volt, and then we're going to open up the load, and then whatever that load sees, that is our R feminine. So clearly this here is just 12 kilo ohms, right? So we have 12k here. So then we have 12k in parallel with 20k. And I'm going to let you do the math here. But that should give you 7.5K. So all that is the same as 7.5K. So this here then is 10K. So 10K in parallel with 10K. At this point in your um, career as a student in engineering, you should know that when you have two equivalent resistances connected to each other, you should automatically know that the equivalent resistance is one half of that. So that means our our feminine our is 5K. So we're going to park that value here. That is the feminine resistance that will give us maximum power transfer. That's part A. Now, in part B, we're supposed to actually find the maximum power that can be delivered to the R feminine. So remember I said that this problem reduces to finding the feminine resistance. So what we need to do then is we need to find this feminine. We found the R feminine. That's going to be 5K, right? 5K. And to maximize that, we said that the load has to be the same. So 5K. So the maximum power that's going to be delivered is going to be Right, we're going to go back to Ohm's theorem. So the maximum power that's going to be um, so P of five K then is going to be um, I squared R. So whatever that I is over the R naught, which is the five K. 
So we have to find that feminine resistance because without that feminine resistance, we don't know what that I is that will give us the maximum power transfer. So let's find the feminine resistance. And for that, I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to use um, the mesh, you can use the mesh method or the, the node voltage method, and I chose to use the mesh method. So to find um, the feminine resistance, we open the load. This is our load, we're going to open that. And the feminine is the feminine resistance seen by the load, which means it's going to be the sum of this 10 volt um, resistance, or uh, 10 volt independent voltage source. Notice that going from here, looking into the feminine resistance, this voltage source goes from a plus to a minus, which means there's a drop going from this point to here. So that means the feminine voltage is going to be whatever the voltage drop across the 10K resistor is minus the 10 volt independent voltage source. So let's go ahead and start the, um, the mesh method. I don't need to write a mesh equation here because I know what that current is. That's 3 milliamps. Now this mesh here has some IA that I'm into, I want to find. This mesh has some current IB that I want to find. This is an open, so there is no mesh current there. So let's go ahead and write our mesh equations. So mesh at IA is going to be the 4K resistor times IA minus 3 milliamps. And the next voltage drop is going to be 8K IA. And after that, we have 20K plus 20K times IA minus IB. And then from heat and then plus 10 volts. Plus 10, that's equal to zero. That is our first mesh equation. All right, so our second set of our second mesh equation is going to mesh at the IB. So at IB, we've got minus 10 this time, right? Because the current is positive current is entering the negative terminal. And then the next one is going to be 20K times IB minus IA. And then plus, now right here I'm going to take a shortcut. I know that there's no current here flowing through the 10 volt independent voltage source because I've opened the load. So that's an open, no current can flow through there. So that means the 2.5 and the 10K are in series. So I'm going to, it's going to go plus 12.5K IB. That's equal to zero. Now we're going to put all of our um, everything into a matrix, a two by two matrix. I have IA, IB, and constants. So I'm going to inventory coefficients. The first one is 4K IA, and then minus kilos and millis cancel each other out. So I got minus 12, which will go on the other side with the constants as positive 12. So then we have plus 8K for IA as the next term, and then plus 20K, and then minus 20K for IB, and then minus 10. So that's our first line of the matrix. And the next uh, one is going to be IB. We have negative 10, which will come over on the other side as positive 10. And then we have 20K for IB, minus 20K for IA, and then plus 12.5K for IB. Alright. So, now we're going to use our calculator to solve those two equations. So we have two equations and two unknowns. So we have 4E3 plus 8E3 plus 20E3. And then negative 2E3 12 minus 10, negative 20E3, 20E3 plus 12.5E3, and then 10, and then solve. Uh-oh, something is wrong. Um, IA, so let's take a look. I got 4K IA minus 12, oh, oh, 8K. Here, 20K. Oh, not, not minus 2, minus 20. So this should be minus 20. So let's go ahead and go back and fix that to be minus 20E3. And then solve. 
still something is wrong. So I got 10, 20, minus 20K, plus 12.5. Oh, I see I have a, let's do 20E3 plus 12.5E3. That's more like it. Okay, so let's see if that matches up with what I have. Still not quite. So this, I'm going to double check with my work here. 4, 8, and 20, minus 20, 20 plus 12.5. So that must mean that I have a typo somewhere in my matrix. Okay, so I've got 4, E3, 4, this should be 32. That's 12, so that should be 32. That's correct. This should be 20. That's correct. Oh, oh, no, that's correct. That's 2. Oh, I had a 0 here instead of a 10. So that should be 10. Now does it match? Okay, so now I got... Yes, okay, so now I got what I got in here. So... What you should have found is you should have come up with IA is four point, actually, IA is 0 0.41406 milliamps, and IB is 0 0.5625 milliamps. Okay, so we needed the IB. We wanted the IV because we were looking for V Thevenin, and we said V Thevenin is going to be the voltage drop across the 10K. So, so V Thevenin then is um, V 10K plus, or in this case minus, because we're going from plus to minus towards the V Thevenin, which means we experience a voltage drop. Minus 10 would be our V Thevenin. So V 10K then is going to be 0.5625 times 10k minus 10 so then we got 0.5625 times 10 e3 oops I forgot the milliamps this is e minus 3 right times 10 because we're talking millis and millis times kilos should cancel each other out so point 5625 times 10 minus 10 gives you negative, so V7 and then is equal to negative 4.375 volts. So that's our V7. We needed that in order to find the maximum power that could possibly um, be drawn from this circuit, from, can possibly be delivered from that circuit. So we're going to redraw this entire circuit in terms of V7. Now we have found the way to simplify all of that into a maximum power transfer circuit. And we're going to redraw that as um, minus plus the direction of the voltage rise is down, 4.375. And then our R7, R7 is 5K. And in order to get maximize the power that can be transferred from that circuit, we match it with 5K. So that's our R0. So we ch adjust our varistor to 5K. So now, what's the maximum power that can be delivered? We have to find the current that's going through it. So then um, we use Ohm's law. V is equal to IR, so therefore I is equal to V over R. So that's going to be 4.375 over 10K. So what is that current? So then that current is 4.375 divided by 10 E3. It's going to be 0.4735 milliamps. So let me just double check that, that is what I got before. Okay, so that is what I got. And um, so now we know, so then power then is key. Power dissipated by the 5K is going to be 
its voltage, P, V of 5K squared over 5K, right? V squared over R. So now we know what that, um, what that, um, the I is, or actually I squared R, excuse me. I squared R, so we know it's going to be 5K times um, 0. Point kilos and millis cancel each other out, so 4.7, 47.35 millis, milliamps. So we're going to go 0.5 or 5k, 5 times 0.4735. Um, actually, we've got to square that. So we're going to go 0.4735e3 squared times 5e3, and that gives me. Try again. All right, let's try that again. Point four two three five e minus three square that minus three times um, five e three. Hmm. For some reason, I'm not getting the same answer that I got before. Four point three seven five milliamps squared. All right, let's try that again. Point four three seven five e minus three squared times four five e three. Okay, so this time something funny happened with the ordering of um, my TI eighty nine parentheses or whatever. So I put the proper parentheses. And this time I did get the right answer, so when you do that, you should get um, that the power, the maximum power that can possibly deliver is going to be 9.50, 957, 957.03 microwatts. Okay, that is the answer to part B. So the answer to part A is R0 is going to be 5 kilo ohms. Um, which is our thevenin. In part B, it's going to be 957.03 microwatts. In part C, it says, find a resistor in appendix H closest to the value in part A and how much the, uh, power is delivered to this resistor. Well, the closest value in the appendix is 4.7K. So instead of 5K, we have 4.7K. So what's the power? Well, what we have to calculate it, the new I, right? So then I is equal to V, V over R, so 4.375 over 5K plus 4.7K. So our new I is um, 4.375, divide that by 5E3 plus 4.7E3, so our new I is 400.45103 milliamps. So then the new power that can possibly deliver to that 4.7 is P of 4.7K. Then it's going to be V or I squared R. So that's going to be 4.45103 milliamps squared times 4.7K. So then we go that squared times 4.7e3. Check my answer with what I got the first time. And I got the same answer. So the maximum power that can actually be delivered if the, the closest that you can match is going to be um, 900. So P of 4.7K, then it's going to be 956.12 micro, microwatts. And that is the answer to this problem. All right, you guys, make sure to like the video, share the video, and like the Facebook page if you got free help today.